Good morning. The Lord be with you. It's good to see all of you here on this wonderful Sunday as we celebrate the birth of the church on Pentecost Sunday here. So welcome. Uh, for announcements, we just have a few announcements this morning. Um, there will be a still youth fundraiser at Applebee's. will be on Tuesday, May 21st. Um, also, draw your attention to Vacation Bible School and Summer Music Camp, both coming up, and they can always use volunteers. Uh, but also, the registration for those are there in your bulletin. You'll see um, the information for that to have the children uh, registered. And then our summer service schedule is also in your bulletin starting on June 9th. So a few weeks yet uh, at 9.30 here in the sanctuary for a single service all the way through July 28th. Are there other announcements this morning? About joys or concerns as well?
of uh, our offering this morning. Uh, we have uh, another senior we would love to recognize, and uh, I'm going to ask that Nancy come forward, and she's going to present our senior.
line for all the ways you speak to us in rushing wind, in advancing planes, in words we understand, and in all that transcends language, we give thanks. Give us courage to seek your love everywhere we go to everyone we meet. Amen. Let us greet one another with peace this morning. Jesus died to save us. 
but our sadness did not last forever, Peter reminded us that soon there was joy, laughter, and dancing. Jesus came back to us. God raised him from the dead and gave us new life. We all hear the word. Peter preaches, and the Holy Spirit changes us. The rivers of baptism pour out, and we feel God's love. A love for us, our families, our friends, and animals, yes. And even people who are far away, people, people everywhere, and all God's creatures, hear the good news. We all begin this new life together. We become a new family. We share our things. We break bread together, and we worship God. This is what we call Pentecost. The day when the church was born, men and women, boys and girls, people from everywhere are filled with the Holy Spirit and we worship Jesus, alive and risen. Alleluia. So what does Pentecost mean? No, no. It's the Holy Spirit. It's when we became a church and we gathered together. They don't know either? Well, that's okay. It, it's a new word. It's Caleb. Awesome, Caleb. Well, thank you. For being up here with us. Can, can you repeat after me as we pray? Well, that's awesome. That sounds like fun. Yeah. Uh, let us pray. Dear God, thank you for your love and your spirit that flows in me and through me to those around us. Amen.
Olympion, whom you formed to play in it. When you give to them, they gather it. When you open your hand, they are filled with good things. When you hide your face, they are dismayed. When you take away their breath, they die and return to their justice. When you send forth your spirit, they are created. And you renew the face of the ground. May the glory of the Lord endure forever. May the Lord rejoice in his work. Who looks on the earth and enjoys who touches our mountains and makes more. I will sing to the Lord as long as I live. I will sing praise to my God while I have being. May my meditation be pleasing to the Lord in whom I rejoice. Let the sinners be consumed from the earth, and let the wicked be no more. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. Praise the Lord. When they heard this sound, a crowd gathered. They were mystified, because everyone heard them speaking in their native languages. They were surprised and amazed, saying, Look, aren't all the people who are speaking Galileans, every one of them? How then can each of us hear them speaking in our own native language? Parthians, Medeas, Elamites, as well as the residents of Mesopotamia, Judea, Cappadocia, Pontus, and Asia. Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt, and the regions of Liberia bordering, bordering Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and converts to Judaism, Cretans and Arabs, we hear them, declaring the mighty works of God in our own languages. They were all surprised and bewildered. Some asked each other, what does this mean? Others jeered at them, saying, they're full of new wine. Peter stood with the eleven apostles. He raised his voice and declared, Judeans and everyone living in Jerusalem, know this. Listen carefully to my words. These people aren't drunk, as you suspect. After all, it's only nine o'clock in the morning. Rather, this is what was spoken through the prophet Joel. In the last days, God says, I will pour out my spirit on all people. Your sons and daughters will prophesy, your young will see visions, your elders will dream dreams. Even upon my servants, men and women, I will pour out my spirit in those days, and they will prophesy. I will cause wonders to occur in the heavens above, and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and a cloud of smoke. The sun will be changed into darkness, and the moon will be changed into blood, before that great and spectacular day of the Lord comes. And everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. This is the word of the Lord. And thanks be to God. Let us pray. God, we thank you for your word that breathes life into us and guides us to know you more. May your spirit open our hearts to receive and to hear from you. And may these words that I speak be your words for your people. May they be holy and pleasing to you, Lord, for you are my rock and my redeemer. Amen. A few 
few months back in January, if you remember, we were doing a sermon series called You Ask the Question. And on one of the particular weeks, and one of the questions that was asked was, why go to church? And it seems that Acts 2 is, goes to the very core, even before that question, what is church? What is it about it? Why do we gather together? What calls us together? And here on this Pentecost Sunday, church is what we celebrate, knowing that it is Christ who is the foundation, that it is the Spirit poured out that makes church, that gathers us together to be as one, worshiping the Lord. What is church? Church is the Holy Spirit on fire in our hearts and in our lives, those who may not get along. And those who are from different languages and different cultures all gathering together for the sole purpose to know and be known by God and to live in to that love in relationship with one another. But something really strikes me as most interesting in this passage this morning is that it wasn't a, a peaceful moment. In fact, the wind and all that took place was chaos. They, they were having a peaceful moment. They were in their home trying to process that once again that their Lord Jesus has now ascended into heaven. And they are trying to figure out, well, what do we do next? And it's in this moment where the Holy Spirit breaks into the midst of the peace and causes a great amount of chaos and confusion. Languages were spoken that others heard from their own native tongues, and yet those who were speaking them were not from that region. They were all Galileans, as it says here in Acts chapter 2. People were confused. They thought maybe some had too much wine to drink, but it was yet early in the morning. The Holy Spirit's fire come, came down upon them, causing chaos and confusion. It is the Holy Spirit that not only comes in with peace and love, but necessary at times to cause confusion, to cause great uh, chaos in order for new life to grow and to flourish. It reminded me of the most uh, memorable and unique funeral I have ever done. I've done probably about a hundred by now uh, of funerals, and this one tops it, tops it as the, the most bizarre day of chaos. Uh, I, I got a phone call earlier that week from a church member and her husband had passed away and it was pretty sudden. There was no, uh, he wasn't very sick or anything like that. It was sudden. He died in his bed in their home. Uh, and so I went and, and was with her in those moments. And then the service, a few days later that morning, I get to the church and the power just happened to be out on that side of town. So there was no uh, lights, there, there was no sound system, and there was no internet. I had to run to the local library to print off my sermon and the, the stuff for the day because I hadn't printed it off yet. And then I get back to the church and I find out, oh, we do have power now, it came back on. And I thought that that was the worst of the chaos that day, and it was not. In, in fact, five minutes before the service was about to start, a church member came frantically into the church, and they're like, Pastor, Pastor, you, you need to go outside. Someone has been hit by a car. So I uh, worried, of course, hurried out the door, and it's downpouring outside and raining. And I see one of my church members is the one laying on the ground. And she had gotten out of her car to have it be parked for her uh, and forgot to put it in park. So she got out and the car rolled over her uh, and she was lying there. And I went up to her and of course uh, I, I was talking to her and she was uh, alert and I was praying for her in that moment. But I noticed that the police officers who were there as well as the ambulance were the same ones who happened to be in the house of the person who had passed. And I went up to them and I said, did you ever imagine that we would see each other so soon again? And they said, this is just a normal life for us. Chaos. And at the end of all of it, the spirit was still there because it was a beautiful service. Remembering his life, the, the girls uh, played music in which their father would come and hear them no matter how far away they were. And it was beauty 
in the midst of a most chaotic and suffering time. And, and I think of how the Spirit does that. It comes in the midst of peace, but it comes in the midst of chaos too. And it causes great destruction in its wake, especially here in Acts chapter 2. Not peaceful, chaotic, confusing time, especially for the apostles who, who don't really know what to expect. Jesus did warn them, said several times over and over, I will, I, I will send an advocate to be with you. The Spirit will be with you. But what does that mean? Like, I wonder if they were just as confused as oftentimes we are when we talk about the Spirit of, of God, the, the Trinity, part of understanding that. And then here in this moment, this big and wonderful, chaotic moment, the Spirit comes in like a whirling wind, causing chaos and commotion. And it's Peter. The first sermon Peter will ever preach is in this moment, and he gets it. He connects the pieces together. And in the midst of the chaos, he calls all those there who are listening. He said, this is the Spirit. This is the work of God. And it was after this big moment here in chapter 2 that the church began to grow. They would oftentimes gather in houses. And it says even here that they, they later on in, in Acts, that they would share all that they had so that everybody had enough. Nobody had too much and nobody had less. But they gathered together regularly, they would pray, they would spend time uh, probably telling the stories of the amazing events that have taken place, of the resurrection of Jesus, and all of the lessons that he taught them while still on earth. And then this moment, this big, amazing, chaotic moment where the Spirit pours in and their lives are forever changed because it connects it together. This is God's presence even now with them, that God did not abandon them, that they are not alone, that even in the chaos and even in the joy and peace, God is present. The Spirit is working and acting and making all things good and new. It reminded me that uh, for a while during COVID, uh, I was recording my sermons and putting them on a YouTube page mostly, so that was the way that uh, the congregations could hear uh, the message that week was not having in-person services. And often I would uh, get comments on my page that were just absolutely horrible or hurtful. And, and I thought about it, I could argue back, right, just comment more. But the best thing it, that I thought would be just delete them and move on. There's no need to respond to those who have written these things on my, my page. And I think about that a lot at Facebook because I have friends who are just like, I'm done with Facebook. All it is is I, I post something and there's always comments back and forth, some of them hateful, some of them angry. And I, I wonder if this passage talks about how our words and how our conversation are meant to go deeper than just defending one side or another, but that our words are to understand one another in grace. To dig into those comments, what in your life has brought you this far that you came to that conclusion? And what in my life has brought me this far that I came to my own opinion and thought? That the early church was words in languages that they, they heard and knew and were surprised by. How do, we under, how do we hear and understand them in our own language? They had to listen in the midst of the chaos in the midst of the howling wind and the amazing uh, voices that were going on among them, they had to listen. They had to gather together to be one body, to listen to the breath of God speak. And part of that is learning from one another. Life stories, relationships, building upon the experiences that each person had. The church is those gathered together. It is Jesus, the Holy Spirit, that makes a church, that gathers followers together, and it will continue to grow. It will not be established yet as Christianity, as a religion, for, for years later. But many Jews were, were converting. They were there in the moment. They experienced the raw and beautiful love of Christ. Some of them seeing it first 
hand with their own eyes. Others are going to hear the stories, are going to hear Peter preach again several times and many of the other apostles. And they too will join in because the breath of God is breathing and moving. That the church is in fact the breath of God, God's spirit molding us, making us new. Mending our hearts, sometimes breaking them, destroying the hardness that we have or the thoughts that we thought we knew in order for new life to grow and to flourish. The wind had to come in in such a strong and a powerful way because I wonder if they would have all missed it. If it was just a calm, uh, the breath is there, were they paying attention? Is it what they expected? I imagine that God needed to get in there and make it big and bold so that they would listen and see and know that God was alive and well. And the church began to hold on to that hope of love, of Christ, that spirit moving in them, and it grew. It is, if you continue reading in the book of Acts, it grew because they gathered together regularly, they prayed, they shared the love of God, and the spirit went wild. Fire grew in the hearts of so many who had gathered together in small, intimate settings in their homes. The Spirit caught fire in their hearts, some ripping them apart and starting new others, mending back together, caring and tenderly loving is only the way God can love so that they can grow and share in that good news. Chaos is not always bad. Sometimes it takes that moment to see the breath of God. And there's even peace in that moment. Peace because for the apostles and those witnessing it, they knew, wow, this is the moment. Yes, Je what Jesus has said has happened. This is God. This is uh, Jesus right here, present, doing all of this. And Peter spoke up. He knew that. And others too began to speak. And it will catch on. And they will continue prophesying and sharing the good news. So the church is gathered together, sharing in different uh, natives and tongues and languages as well as sharing together different people made up of different stories and lives who all gather to worship the Lord and then share that fire that is in their heart with one another to grow and become messengers of God's love prophesying oneself this passage in Acts that Peter quotes from is, is from the book of Joel actually the Old Testament often misused as this is the day that Jesus is coming right now. It's the end times. But while it is true and, and things are going to look differently when Christ arrives again for the second coming, Peter uses it to understand that the Spirit can move you. The Spirit moves mountains. The Spirit of God acts in our hearts that things might become chaotic. You might learn tomorrow something that you never could grasp before, and that the forgiveness that you weren't able to give, or maybe it's that God's love for you never fades away, and you have a hard time accepting that love, because for you, you don't feel as worthy as God says that you are, and the Spirit comes, and it changes you. The church is the Spirit of God changing hearts on fire so that they too might grow and to share that with others, that they know the stories, the stories in our scriptures, the stories of truth and experiences in our own lives that flourish and guide us each and every day. And some of our stories have heartache in them and chaos and other moments joy. But it's in every one of those moments where we step back and we see the Spirit of God guiding us through. And that's the good news. We are not alone. God does act. God's promises come true, and the Spirit guides us in every action, gathering us together so that our languages merge to understanding and compassion and love, and we go forth with a fire of our hearts, spreading the good news to one another. Let us pray. God, it is you who set a fire in our hearts with your love, with good news that only can happen when we feel and know your spirit can happen when we relent of the hardness we oftentimes harbor in our hearts 
when you break in, destroying all of our previous thoughts and making them filled and new. God, when we are too afraid to let go, may you continue to breathe into us so we catch on to that breath and that fire and open up to all the possibilities of love that you have for us. Let us continue to trust in you to grow and to be the church, a church that flourishes in the love of God, a church that spirit is your spirit, sharing good news, welcoming all together, the poor, the sick, the hungry, those who haven't got it all together and those who think they do. All are welcomed in your embrace, God, in your holy uh, kingdom. And it is your kingdom that we celebrate and rejoice that we are a part of together in this uh, world and beyond when we are with you in heaven. We thank you, God, for your love and for being with us in every moment. Amen. Let us profess with our minds the great joy of our belief in Jesus Christ and all that has been shared and taught to us so that we too might know the love of God. You'll stand in joy of our apostles. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified and died in his burial. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. And is seated at the right hand of the Father, and will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. So that God's love might be made known in you, and that same fire and glow and spirit of God may flourish to those around you in your presence, and those beyond these walls and into the world. 